Hi everyone, I'm Marie, and we are coming to you live from Living Felt because it's Happy Woolly Wednesday! Oh, the fairies are here with me, and we are so glad to see you. I don't know if that caught eye seems, seems like there was a little jam up there. Hey guys, welcome to the live show, and thank you all so much for being here. We are just loving watching you all check in from all over the world, all of our friends. We appreciate you so much, and darn it, we are thankful for you. We were just talking about where's the furthest away we mailed packages this week. In Mexico, a little bit closer, but then the Netherlands is another one and man we just love having you all here so I want to say hi to some folks I see Ada is there in Montana and Rose in Maryland Maribel in Pennsylvania Carrie all the way in Germany she said was glad that she got the time right so thanks for being here um, we have Carol in Michigan and Dory in Maryland so nice to see you gals here Pamela in Oregon hey and Sunny in slow I, I know San Luis Obispo I hope your boss isn't watching but that's right north of where I lived I was lived in Santa Barbara for a long time uh, Ginny in New York and Christina in Poland Kathleen in Alaska and so many more of you gals thank you so much for being here hey today I want to do a super shout out to one of our BFFs Kimberly Czar and I got one of her incredible grumpkins if y'all haven't seen these she shared them in our Facebook group which is where we all hang out all week so let me um, pop that up for you our Facebook group is just a fun hang we always share what we made or even works in progress and Kimberly's uh, Etsy is Czar C Z A R design and we have a few things by her including she's designed a kit for us but I just loved this grumpkin and I had to have one and she probably has more so check them out y'all this thing is really well needle felted so I'm gonna put them on the set so you can admire him big round of hearts for Kimberly and thank you for that so much so hey today is an interactive show if you've fallen onto the live feed welcome we like to do a bit of interactive um, chit chat the fairies like to do some show and tells and if you just want to move through that if you're watching the playback well then you can just hit the fast forward but I have some prizes to give away so every show for people who participate in the live chat which should be going on over here we give away prizes but for those of you who don't participate in the live chat or don't get your question answered or just your name didn't get drawn you can always comment down below after the live feed is over and your name goes into a hat too so we have two prizes to give away these gals can win either the beanie kit or the cowl kit which we have been sharing we've been doing lots of wet felting lately and you get your choice of a kit so our winners are Louise Young who was very excited after our last wet felting adventure and she says she has all the supplies and she was hoping that it would follow and I think that was after the beanie and then Candy Wham who said ha ha love Holly I'm a <laughs> collector of craft and felting stuff too <laughs> so Holly last week promised us a sunset I don't think there's a sunset coming but we're gonna wish Holly well with that because <laughs> she's a busy mom I know all of you gals are busy too and thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be with us today today we are going to needle felt a thankful pillow cover well this is my pillow cover work in progress and I'm gonna show you a different way that you can get words onto fabric surprise surprise I'm not using the transfer pen for the first time ever so I have a new technique to share with you it's not so new but it's new for us to share so stick around we're gonna jump into that but first up of the fairies is Miss Fairy Hannah yeah. Hey everybody, how are y'all doing today? Fairy Hannah here, showing off one of our 3D needle felting kits. This is going to be the needle felting a uh, pumpkin house kit. And this is one of my favorite. I think it's super cool. You can, of course, go with Marie's design, or I think it's really fun that you can kind of create your own shape, even do a gourd, uh, something like that. So the kit will come with all the fiber that you need. You may want to get a foam if you don't already have one and some needles. But super fun kit, perfect for fall, make a cute little centerpiece or just some Halloween decorations for around the house. So that's that little guy. Thank y'all so much and next up I got Miss Fairy Ann. Yay! <laughs> Hi friends, thank you so much for being here with us today. I get to share with you a new color that we just got in in the linen fabric. We are in love with it. We hope you love it too. This right here is our new Cardinal Red 
linen fabric. It's a little bit brighter than the barn red. I've got that one right here to show you. So this one right here is the barn red and this is the new cardinal red. It is available right now under the needle felting supplies category. You'll see the subcategory linen fabric and we are just in love with this color and we're so excited to see what y'all are going to make with it. We know you're going to blow us away. <laughs> Everyone's saying, hi, Anne, and Daria says, beautiful new red. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Devin says, you guys are also talented on camera. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you, Devin. <laughs> Next up, we have got Fairy Holly. <laughs> hi, everyone, and yes, there is no sunset, except for go outside tonight and you can see a sunset. <laughs> um, I got a little I got a little overwhelmed, but in the next couple of weeks hopefully there will be one. But today instead we're going to talk about one of my favorite things which are our felt sheets. Um, they're 100% wool and this is our fall bundle, fall festival, and we have violet, berry, leaf, sunshine, orange, and red. So they are perfect for um, felting onto as your background or I'm like a big banner maker so I like to cut them up and make shapes and banners but either way um, we have these this beautiful bundle or a selection of amazing colors so um, that's it for me Aww. <laughs> this is hi Holly and Kevin says the fairies are our sunset oh I'm gonna remember that later <laughs> so now we have Miss Fairy Kayla Yay! Hey everybody, I am sharing our fabulous fall goodie here in our MC1 fiber. So this is going to be a shorter, crimpier fiber. It's perfect for needle felting and actually a lot of these colors here will be in that pumpkin house kit that Miss Hannah was showing. So this, these colors can vary from round to round. In this round we're going to have hot orange, shire, mango, mahogany, Cotton white, slate, evergreen, sage, driftwood, espresso, grape, and pomegranate. So you get all 12 colors in there. So, yay! <laughs> 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 so now I've got a question for everybody. Why was Cinderella so bad at football? Why, Why was Cinderella <laughs> so bad at football? Because her coach was a pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> Corny joke. Can I just see a big round of hearts for the fairies and a big round of hearts for you all too. Thank you so much for taking time out of your week to spend it with us and we're just grateful for you so very much. So today we're, as I mentioned, we're doing a new way to get a design onto fabric and I'm interested to see how far we can push this. Um, and what I wanted was a way that involved not using the transfer pen because some people maybe are a little averse to it and we're always looking for ways to do an image transfer. So this is technically not quite an image transfer. In this case, we're actually gonna needle felt right onto the image that we created and I'm gonna show you how we do that. So what we have is you can, after the live feed uh, or if you close the chat, you can download Download the supply list and this actually the link is going to take you to the place where you can also watch the replay you can download this little supply list and you also will see links to all of the supplies that I'm going to show you right now so let me show you what we are working with here quick here we go okay so I'm working on our pumpkin linen fabric get that out of the way. I'm working on our pumpkin linen fabric and the pillow I'm making is about 18 by 18. So you'll want to either use wool felt or linen fabric or something you already know that you like to needle felt onto. Of course I'm using our MC1 batting. I brought in a collection of colors. This is what a half ounce looks like. Um, and you can get it in half, one, two, or larger ounces, or goodie bags as the gal showed, showed you. This is olive, this is vintage red, and then I brought in a few more colors as well. Dark chocolate is the main color I'm going to be working with for the thank you, that was my preference. And we have the pattern 
right here so you can get this pattern either printed or as a PDF and we printed it on Paper Solvi. So maybe some of you have used Paper Solvi in other projects and I wanted to see can we needle felt right through it and I'm here to tell you yes you can. So if you get the PDF from us then you can either use the iron-on transfer pen like we usually show you or you can um, get the printed version and get it printed right on the paper solvi already. Now this paper is dissolvable in water and I'm going to show you today exactly how we use it. Cool. Okay, here we go. All right. Oh, am I on the wrong? I'm on the wrong. I'm, I'm crooked today, so let me fix that for you. Sorry about that. Here we go. Okay, so today the first thing we want to do is to cut out our design in the paper solvi. So all, today's lesson completely is going to be as if you're using the paper solvi. Now the paper solvi you print through an inkjet printer, but you could draw right onto it, you could trace onto it, or you could even use the iron-on transfer pen onto it. And I, how I like to use it is to cut it out with a little bit of a margin so that I can um, pin it to my fabric, which essentially is my work surface. So we're going to do that to start. And from time to time, Anne is going to let me know if you have any questions um, relative to the section that we're on. Okay. So just cut out your design and again I like to leave a little bit of a perimeter so that it can be pinned but I don't want to pin the whole thing because that's just a lot of paper to manage. So something just like this is just fine. And then you'll decide where you want it on your fabric. So I'm going to place it here on my fabric but the first thing I want is I actually want my fabric to be ironed. So if you're making something that is going to be, if you're making something that is going to be, um, sorry y'all, I'm having issues today. If you're making something that's going to be washed, make sure you wash your fabric first. And I think it's best if you just go ahead and get all of the wrinkles out of your fabric before you start. Now it doesn't need to be pristine, but you don't want any big creases that you're gonna have to contend with in your design. There we go. Okay, so once your fabric is all ironed, then you just want to get your image where you want it onto your fabric. I'm going to put it right about here, say, you know, dead center, and I don't have any fancy ways to tell you how to, um, how to get it centered or anything. You can fold it, mark it, whatever you're most comfortable with. Um, but this is going to be the front face of a pillow co cover for me. So now if you have like a temporary adhesive or something that you wanted to use along those lines, you could kind of stick it in place. Um, I didn't want any residue left on my fabric at all and I didn't want to have to launder my fabric. You can take off uh, the, this material, we're going to dissolve it in water, and you can do that without soap, so I just didn't want anything sticky to contend with. So get it right onto your fabric, and then we're going to pin it into place. And I like to just pin it at a few different points, just like this. Those are long pins. And just keep it lying flat, if you can. Basically, you want it to stay where you put it. You could pin it to your, uh, to your foam if you want to, but I, I don't want to pin it to my foam. I want to be able to um, take it off if I desire to. Okay.
Now the only other place you might want to put a pen since is like right in here you have a big bank of paper. You want all the paper laying down as much as possible and you don't want it to be buckled. So anywhere that you feel like you need to hold it down, go ahead and stick a pin in it. You can always take the pin out if you want to. And then get everything really nice and flat. Cool. Okay, now the fiber you work with is really up to you. I like using our MC1 because it needle felt's really flat and I can draft it out into exactly the thickness or the length that I want. And this right here is dark chocolate. So we're actually just going to needle felt right through the paper. Now for your needles, I'm suggesting that you play with um, any, something in the 38 range, maybe like a, you might look at a 38 star or a 38 triangle or a 40 triangle or a 42 triangle. You know that usually when I needle felt with you, I work with a 42 triangle uh, when I needle felt 2D and when we're doing finishing touches that I use a 42 triangle which is a very fine delicate needle but the reason I'm considering or suggesting that you might try a 40 triangle or a 42 triangle is I mean a 40 triangle or a 38 triangle is it's a little more aggressive and I found that having a needle that was a little more aggressive helped me push through the paper a little bit better so when you get your fiber, and this is just a tiny strip of, of the fiber, you want to go ahead and draft off a length. It's better to kind of work with a length and just pull off like a long bit like this. And then as we work with it, we're just going to make it thin and draft it out into a real thin line. Okay, let's see. So there's a couple of ways to like, we're going to have some fuzzies on this project, I'll warn you, but one of the ways to kind of combat the fuzzies when we go here to an end, so I'm going to start here at the end and I'm going to start backwards. And anyone who needle felted the, we did a nose like this, was it the, it was the owl nose or something where we went backwards. So I have my fiber and I'm putting the wispy loose ends backwards and then I'm just going to needle felt right into the top of that letter. And then when you fold it back, you're going to have less loose ends sticking off that end. This is really a fun project to do if you are, I don't know, maybe you just need a project to busy your hands. You want a quick way to do a decoration, like I'm doing a pillow. This would make a great table linen, whether it's a... Um, like a table runner or just a little placemat or something like that. It'd be a really quick way to go about it. If you want to make sure, if you want to make it um, your design, you can make your design lighter than your fiber or darker than your fiber. I don't mind it being darker, um, being the same color. I don't really find it's difficult to see, but you can think about that. We made the design more the colors we suggested to put in the design. And you're going to kind of follow your way all the way around this, all the way around the thankful and the berry. So we're going to do a few of these letters together. And when you tear off a bit, it's okay. Just overlap that part when you start the next one. And when those loose fibers go back up into the rest of the body of that line, it's fine. It's not sticking off on what is going to be um, just fabric later. You can put the loose ends right back into the body of that letter. Now right now I'm just kind of tacking it down to get it in place and then you're going to go back and fill it in and make it as dense as you want it and clean up all the edges. So for now get the main sort of spine of your letters in place. And you can either tear it off at any point that you feel comfortable or just, I like to let the length go as long as possible, kind of like peeling an apple or something. <laughs> I like to see how long I can get it unless it feels like a real natural break, um, a natural place to break that fiber. Let me do a little bit more of this letter and then I want to see if y'all have any uh, questions or tips or ideas already. Okay, let's just do a little bit more and I'm going to cross that T. 
Now, with the, the needle is penetrating the paper, and that helps kind of tear the paper a little bit, which is fine. We're, um, we're just going to put our whole design on here and then dissolve all of this paper that we have, which is, I think it's just kind of like magic. I was telling the gals that it was actually years ago that I wanted to try this paper um, for needle felting something like a picture before I'd even tried to needle felt a picture. I mean, this was years and years ago before living felt was anything more than something that lived in my craft room. <laughs> and, and I never did it. I never really um, tried it for like a really solid picture, but I'm thinking for a big picture, because the way the paper might buckle, it might be better to try something uh, by piecing it in place rather than um, than having a whole big printed picture and trying to fill in every little bit with the, the picture because I think you're going to get some little areas that are kind of wonky to work with. So if somebody does a picture using this paper, I would suggest trying it more like a piecing of some of these subjects or elements in that. Okay, so see how I kind of went all the way to the end? And then just so I don't have to kind of tame those loose ends, while I have it still on the body, I'm just going to bring it back over and then pull it off so that I can wrap all of those loose ends back into uh, the body of the letter. You can trim them, of course, if you want, but I think you're going to find that it's easier to put down too little, uh, too little of fiber. Gosh, you know, you might want to use something like this so that you sign your works. Maybe if you're doing a 2D um, wall hanging or something like that. One of the things that people always ask about is um, how, can you, how can you sign your work? You could make your signature or your initials on some little tiny piece of paper and drop it right down in the corner and needle fold it like this. Now, it does need to get wet, but you would only need to wet that corner. So it ha this has to be used on something that you're willing and able to get wet. Willing and able to get wet. Okay, I'm going to keep working uh, on this a little bit, so tell me what questions you have or what's come up already in the chat. Alrighty, folks are getting inspired left and right by this project. <laughs> and it's kind of fun. Do, does Living Felt carry this paper? Oh yes, so sorry, I tell you, yes. So you can get this paper, I just on our website, just search the word Solvi. And what will come up is the paper Solvi. This comes, these are eight and a half, when right now we're only carrying it in this pack. So it's eight and a half by 11 sheets. You can feed it right through your ink jet printer. I think it said ink jet or bubble jet, but do bubble jets exist anymore? <laughs> I don't know, but it's not going to work on your laser printer. I accidentally, or wasn't paying attention, I put it in my laser printer and it comes off, you know, on your fingers. Um, oh yeah, it says inkjet or bubble jet. I don't know if bubble jet still exists. Um, and we do carry this, so search the word Solvi and what will come up is this as well as the patterns that we're working with today water soluble stabilizer so it is designed like as a stabilizer but you um, and people use it for embroidery and monogramming and stuff like that it doesn't say needle felting on here but maybe they'll get to that point and include needle felting on their list of ways you can use it because it does work and I, I was really pleased with it but again it has to be something that you're willing to get wet and that's why I want to tell you um, let me switch I'll switch down here to the berries and stuff and then we'll jump ahead um, that's why I want to tell you to make sure that you needle felt this down your fibers down the best you can um, so that you're mostly needle felting them into place mostly needle felting them into place and um, we'll address the rest of that when we kind of get to the one that's a little further along. But let's do a little bit of the berries and twigs, which are honestly every bit as easy. Okay, so here I'm just going to blend a couple of greens. Sometimes I like to pre-blend things so that I don't have to think about it too much. And this is just like a lemongrass and olive. You can do any color of color of greens you want. You could have this in red and the branch in brown. It, it doesn't even matter. And for the leaves, um, you can do the fold back or you can just needle felt. It's like you're just needle felting right in the lines. It's almost like you're cheating, but it's not. We as crafters invent tools to make our work like the best it can be. 
So you don't have to freehand stuff for it to come out really well and be a quality item. And I think, you know, you can kind of, you'll be surprised, I think, at how quickly this process goes. And when you're able to just print it out and place it on your item, if you're selling, whether it's at a holiday show or online, I think that something like this would actually do really well and it would make a really nice gift for somebody and wouldn't be all that difficult to do. So you're going to fill in everything that's important to you with the needle felting bit and what I found, the only tip I have with the berries here is because these uh, vines are kind of going into the berries if you will, I'm going to go ahead and use this ruby or whatever it is on this. If you will go ahead and put your berries in place, then come back and drop that uh, little bit of the vine or of the branch back onto it. So make your berries and vines and um, your branch and your berries any color you want. And I just needle felt in the middle and then scoop all the rest of these things around. What you want to make sure of when you're doing this is that you don't get any fibers crossing and dragging. You've got to keep all of the lines really clean. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back and cut those and deal with them later. So each thing, the berry fibers should not drag into the vine and the vine fibers should not drag across and triangulate into the berry. Make all of your lines as clean as possible. So there's a flat and funny shaped berry. And then bring that vine across so that you can get it um, just sticking right up into the bottom of the berry, the berry as opposed to doing it the other way. Okay. Now, at any point you want, you can, you know, cut fibers, um, but you in some cases you're going to be a, better, a little better off to fold them back in because you're going to have lots of trailing fibers. What you want to do once you start to get your design all filled in is go around and groom all of these little bits. So let me jump to a piece that is further along. Here is one slightly different colors and this one is all filled in, completely filled in. And you can see, I'm not sure if you can see, but the, you know, the paper, the paper is a little wrinkly, you know, from my hands uh, being pushed on it. Can you see how it's a little warped and stuff? It's totally fine. And after you get the whole design filled in, then you want to go around and really nurse all of these lines. And here's how I do that. Just go around to the whole piece, use your finger and scoot the fibers back into the middle and tack them down. So you want to get it as clean as possible. And the paper kind of allows you to see what's sticking off, what's migrating off the edge. I'll go around and needle felt everything down. Now I will warn you that the paper is a bit of a barrier to the felting. So it's there as a guide to help us get everything where we want it, but it also is a, something in between the fabric and the fiber. And it is the material or the fiber is not going to be as needle felted as you need it in every spot, I should say, once you dissolve the paper. So now you don't want to leave it too loose, especially. You really want to take care here and get everything laying down. The whole first ones I did with a 42 triangle, and that's when I figured, you know, I really think that a more aggressive needle would be better. Um, so play with that idea and see what you like and get everything really, really needle felted down. Okay. Get all of your design in place. Okay. Any questions before we jump to the next stage? Yes. Okay. 
Uh, some folks want to know, will the paper dull the felting needles? I really don't think so. I mean, I, I don't think that the paper is that aggressive. The needle goes right through it. So I don't, I don't feel like it's having an impact. But, you know, in the big scheme of things, felting needles aren't all that expensive. And if you feel like a felting needle just isn't working for you, then either try a different needle or just go ahead and replace it with the same size and see is the needle really dull. Felting needles are really designed for many more repetitions than we give them. Now if I was driving this through canvas or something I would say yeah that's more likely going to wear down the needle but I don't feel like this paper is just all that tough. But you know I'm not doing thousands of punches through the paper either. Mm -hmm. Can you draw on the paper or does it only, can it only be printed? No, no, you can draw on the paper, you can use pencil, you can use ink pen, you can use the iron-on transfer pen, you can sort of, you know, put your design up on a window and trace through it, absolutely you can. Yep, you can draw right on it. Could you use the salty paper on backgrounds other than linen, including perhaps even a, a three-dimensional item that's been needle felt? I would say, so the, the question is, can you use it on a three-dimensional item? So you can use it on other backgrounds. You don't have to just use it on linen, but what I'm suggesting is you have to use it on something that can get wet because you have to dissolve the paper in water. So if you're three-dimensional item, and also the paper has to be able to um, be positioned so that it doesn't buckle. So yeah, if you're doing a, a vessel and you want a needle felt onto it and you have a small maybe small design elements, great, or things that you can piece around, great, sure, but just keep in mind that you are going to have to get whatever the thing is wet and really wet to fully dissolve all the paper off. Something to keep in mind. Okay, anything else? One last question. Uh, can you put too much wool on the paper that it doesn't dissolve? I don't think so. So can you put too much wool on the paper so it doesn't dissolve? I don't think so because the water is getting to the paper from both sides. I think this stuff is just some kind of starch. You know, it just is going to go away as you're going to see right now because we have a, a whole bunch of paper here and the suggestion is, and right now I'm just taking out my pins, the suggestion is that you use a large volume of water uh, because, you know, the material is then going to murky up the water so you need to be able to change out the water but here we're just going to go through one pass of removing our little thankful um, off of the foam so just peel it off and um, my I can definitely see the thankful in my foam because I have really pounded this in so it's a little different than I would normally do because I used a more aggressive needle. So you might think about that when it comes to your foam. The first ones I did with the 42 triangle needle, uh, can you kind of see it in there, didn't really impress the foam. The foam isn't torn up but it does definitely have imprints on it. <laughs> where I was driving that in there. So that is something to keep in mind. All right, so what we want to do then is get our water, and I'm going to scoot this out of the way, get our water and dissolve this stuff. Now the water can just be room temperature or you can also consider bringing, um, you know, using warm water. You really want to kind of agitate the stuff and I haven't been felting it, I've just been dissolving it in the water. So here we go, we're just going to plunk our little design right in here. There we go. And look at, look at right away how the paper starts to break up and dissolve away. So you're going to want to do this a couple of times and change out your water because you're going to find that some of these little fine areas, see how murky the water is? Um, some of these little fine areas, these little corners, there's still going to be some paper sitting in there. Here, let me see if I can drain off the water so you can see. And have a look. Oh, let me just rinse it a little bit more. Usually I do this in the sink or, you know, the kitchen sink is large and this bowl is small so a lot of that material is still going to sit on top. But look at how much, you know, just coming off right away. So what, what you'll notice um, when you look at these fibers, when you have that little first person view, is that 
they feel a bit more fuzzy than if you had just needle felted right into the fabric. And that comes from, as I said, the paper acts as a little bit of a barrier between the fabric and your design. So what I like to do then is dry the fabric, rinse it fully, rinse it a few times. Don't be afraid to give it a little bit of work, but I wouldn't rough it up where the, um, let me show you here, the leaves are, the leaves are a little bit more loose and not quite as felted as I like, especially the, the more solid mass areas. And that's why I was saying, you know, on a big design where you have big areas to cover, it feels like it's gonna be a lot more loose. So the only thing I want to caution you on there is don't be overly rough with it. And I know some of you are thinking right now, well, can't I just wet felt it down? Can't I just, you know, wet felt it? it's not going to give you those sharp crisp lines like you want so the best thing to do is to rinse out all of the starch while being gentle with your fabric and your design just do the best you can rinse it a few times uh, rinse it through running water you can rinse it through the back as well but then let it dry and then evaluate it overnight so let me show you uh, another piece that we have that we've been um, working on here it is. Oh, my table's all wet. I better dry all that off. <laughs> Let me dry that off before I do that. And I'll show you. I know you all want to see the back. Can we see the back? Can we see the back? I can hear you already see, and I can't even see what you're writing. I know what you want. Okay. Here we go. Thank you for your patience. My workstation's still a little bit damp, and I'll show you one. Um, here is this one that we have. So this is the Thankful, and I went with some lighter greens. I probably wouldn't have gone quite, quite this, this green actually has a lot of lightness in it. I probably would have gone a little bit um, darker if I were to do it again, or just trade out my greens a little bit, but Find colors that you like, and then once it's all dry, you want to go back and detail it a little bit more. Go back and hit it with your felting needle and clean up all of the lines that you want to clean up. So rather than wet felting those lines, needle felt them. Even if you see some of the white paper left, like you might decide that you can cover it with a little bit of wool or you might decide to um, try and pick it off with a regular needle or get all of your lines clean, get all of them how you want them, and then go back and dissolve any final paper that you see. But that's what I've been doing is going around after it's all rinsed and then needle felting the rest of the design down. And then this one I'm going to turn into an envelope pillowcase so instead of one with a zipper I'm going to do it with a little envelope opening in the back but that is our super quickie little method using the Solvi paper what do y'all think oh my god <laughs> so magical <laughs> it's crazy um, right Kevin says I told you Marie was magic <laughs> It's these people at Solvi, you know, it's the same people that make the iron-on transfer pen. It's the same people. So let me show you the back because I know that you want to see that. Here's the here's the back. Um, not not a whole mess of uh, stuff under uh, you know coming through the back side. It's pretty flat. It kind of gets flattened, I guess, a little bit in that process. But it's not like super fuzzy and sticky outy. Um, and what you can do is if you're going to turn this into something, especially that you want to hand wash it, if you feel that you want to stabilize it even just a little bit, well then put some iron-on you know, stabilizer on the back, something that's washable, like a washable stabilizer. It's not going to pull out through the back, but you might just feel like it has a little more support. I definitely like to use an interfacing um, when I do pillows and things like that. It just makes the, that front design feel a little more solid. The whole front fabric feels a little more solid. Um, but an interfacing is totally an option or a little uh, thin quilt batting, you know, as a little backer or something like that. But all you really need to do at this point is go around, 
tackle all of your little fine details and needle felt them in place and then um, steam press the final design is my recommendation. I always like to give even my needle felts a final steam press. So why don't we do that now on this one and we'll see. I mean, this is really just so easy. If y'all have any, any final questions. Yeah, what do we got? Alrighty, Joan asks, do you need to wash the fabric again after dissolving the paper? I don't think that you need to, um, I would just rinse it really well. I don't think you have to launder it, no. Um, I think you just need to rinse it, rinse all of that starch out. And that's why I said I didn't want to use something where I had to, I just why I didn't want to use anything that had an adhesive because I didn't want to feel like I had to launder it. I wanted just to pin it in place instead of use some kind of adhesive. Marcia asks, could you use a warm sponge and apply that directly to your uh, to the piece while it's flat to dissolve the paper? I suppose you could, but I don't know if you, you know, you saw how much paper I had on there. Now, you can cut more of that paper off and then you're going to have less, especially if you have very little paper. So you can cut more of that off, but I found I couldn't cut it off my fabric without risking cutting into my fabric. It was so tight you know, to cut in between, but you can remove some of the perimeter for sure. And um, here, I'll just show you all this, it's no big mystery here. Just iron, you know, right over it. And when you iron, now some of the things that people ask are, oh, well, it's fuzzy, can I iron it? Remember that ironing doesn't felt. Iron just flattens. So anything that's fuzzy is gonna mush out and you're going to see it. So I would say needle felt this thing the very best you can. And then if you feel like you've just done everything you can, you could, uh, you could go around and trim off the final fuzzies. But just remember that ironing doesn't felt. It just flattens and flattening is not permanent even. It's not going to keep it down and flat. Now you might use this on a mixed media piece and be putting some kind of fixative or material over the top. That's something else, but still any fuzzies that you have off that main branch of the letter are going to migrate out when you iron it and be visible, you know, that way. So better to get as much as you can needle felt it down and then trim off any fuzzies if you want to or whatever design you're doing, trim it with something else. Yeah, other thoughts, ideas. What are you going to use this for? What other questions do you have? Oh, Lauren asks, my... how would this hold up over time if you're making a pillow? I have lots of people on my couches. Would it hold up or would I need to isolate it? You know, I I, I have needle felted pillows. Would one of y'all, uh, would you grab the, the Robin pillow? I'm going to bring this pillow because my couch gets sat on every day, Monday through Friday, pretty much by the fairies. Um, when we meet, we have a morning meeting and this little Robin pillow is small and it gets sat or smooshed on. Now it doesn't get cuddled, right? It's not cuddled. It's not pawed. And it pills, it's peeling a little bit. This thing is a couple of years old. This is an example of something where I put an interfacing on the back and it just makes this whole front piece feel a little more solid. And this isn't even a nice linen. This is like some just inexpensive, um, what do you call it? What do you call it? Off the top of my head, but it's, it can't be more than, it's, it's not all that expensive, but it's, a, it's just a thin semi open weave of fabric. But this is a kit that we have, the Robin kit. It doesn't come with a fabric, it comes with felt sheets. But this pillow gets sat on all the time and leaned up against, and it's pilling a little bit, but it was well needle felted flat in the first place. I definitely didn't trim it, um, but now that I see some of the pills, I might trim it. So I want to see, you can see that this is not all mushed out and destroyed, but um, any pillows that are under needle felted will get roughed up quite a bit. So maybe you put it on the special chair or, <laughs> <laughs> but this one, this one does, it just, and you sit, you or Hannah lean up against this like every day, right? All the time. Yeah. All the, yeah they just, <laughs> they don't pay any attention. They just sit down on the couch because that's what couches are for. Even our, um, our gnome pillows get sat on, not quite as often by guests, but they do get sat on. Okay, what other questions do you have? Ideas, thoughts? 
A few folks wanted to know about the um, mat that you were ironing on. What type of mat is it? Oh, this mat. Um, look, you can pay a lot for these mats or a little for these mats. Your choice. And I even considered bringing them in, but I'm, I, I'm not going to, um, I don't think. We could, but I don't think I will. So these mats are... Um, it is a felt mat, but they, they say they're 100% wool. That might be true. They're gray. They're made in China. Um, the, some of them stink to high heaven when you iron on them. I'll warn you. They smell a little funky, and I'm sure that they use some kind of funky wools to make them, but it's a, just a big wool pad for ironing on. Um, you can get them on Amazon for fairly inexpensive, and you're going to see a lot of different makers of the same ones. The only thing I'll tell you is... Um, the steam blasts all the way through the other side. So this table is a craft table. It's, you know, it's an Ikea table. It holds up to all kinds of abuses that we put it through. But if you have a nice wood surface underneath, that steam will absolutely, it will fool you and it'll go all the way through the pad. And I've warped a good cutting mat um, because I had it underneath and I thought it was fine. It wasn't, but it's just an iron on press pad. You can look, look for wool iron pad or iron mat on Amazon. And when I first saw them come out, they were like over $60. And you can get them for actually much less. Much less. Just read the reviews. <laughs> read, the, read the seller reviews are probably more important than anything. But I like ironing on them. Just the one, the one I have at home actually is kind of stinky. And I think they came from the same maker. Stinky. Wow. <laughs> it stinks. What else? Any other final thoughts, questions, Katie? ideas? Katie asks, what would the, what's the difference between the Salvi paper and the Art Felt paper? I don't know. Does the Art Felt paper require hot water? I think it does. The Art Felt paper requires hot water. And I think that was the difference that they were going for when they designed that paper was to make it require hot water because most soluble stabilizer or soluble paper seems to come in just room temperature water. And um, I don't know why I would need hot water. It doesn't you know there's no reason to have hot water when you're just needle felting the designs on and the art felt paper um i've never printed on it have we i don't think we've ever printed on it so i don't know about that bit i don't think it comes in sheets for your printer i've never heard that suggested or recommended mm -hmm. so the the um, art felt paper is designed to be you tack down your design and then you wet your design, and I think this is why they want it to uh, require heat. Um, because don't you put it in the dryer with heat? Ant's nodding. I think you put it in the dryer with heat, but you basically put a sheet of plastic over your design, you roll it up in something like a wet towel and bind it, and then let it bang around in the dryer. So it wet felts your design into place with the action of the dryer. So it's designed for something different, but it might work for this. I've just never tried printing on it. Yeah, never have. Kemas, what else do you have? Janine asks, could you use this paper and technique with a photograph? I don't know. So that when, when, we at, when we get to the question of talking about something like a photograph, you're talking about a lot more coverage. And you don't really need all of those lines. You might want the support and the guide, but I'm, I don't know. I think that you're gonna have a lot of fuzzy bits. So I would say if you're going to try it, then maybe you try it on a slice of a photograph. That's kind of what I was saying earlier about using it on a bigger picture or a picture that's a little more solid. Try just a slice of the photograph and see how you like it when you're filling in a really solid area. Cause I can see how having the support of the color behind would seem really helpful. And that's how I originally intended to use it for like a picture of a scene, like a landscape. Um, but I never really kind of got around it because it just felt like so much paper to go through. So I would say just plan to needle felt a whole lot more once you're done. Otherwise, you might try something like our, you know, we do pet portraits and like that's one of my red panda where we show you how to use a photograph and to use the iron on transfer pen to get the major lines that are important. The same with this little robin, we use the iron on transfer pen and you use the image as a, a visual guide, um, but it's not, 
on the fabric. I can see how that would be really appealing, but I would say experimentation needs to happen and I haven't tried it. What I do know is that the more solid areas of my piece here, like even where I have the leaves, feel a lot less felted than those really thin lines. And I don't know if it's just me felting less um, or what, but play with it. Let us know how you do and share it in our group. I'll put that up again one more time. Okay, anything else, Anne? One, one last question. How sturdy is the linen fabric? Could it hold up to being like an outdoor garden flag? I don't know. I would say if you wanted to make this an outdoor garden flag, don't leave it by itself. You One, I think um, the colors would probably fade unlike on a nylon. You know, it's going to, the color is going to fade over time. But use a more like a medium or a heavyweight interfacing behind it. I know, well, the, I guess if you don't, if you want it to blow in the wind, then you're going to have to double it. I don't think it's going to get tattered as long as you hem it and hem it well, but you might want to give it even a lightweight interfacing behind or a quilt batting behind or something just to help it hold up a little bit. Um, I, I can't see any reason. This isn't, uh, this is a medium weight. It's not like an outdoor pillow weight. And it's not like I say a sunbrella fabric that is really designed to not fade in the sun. And you might just think about that when you think about, you know, this being out in direct sunlight. But it sure would be cheerful. I look forward to seeing what you do with it. Cool. Any final things? Oh my goodness, I cannot wait to see the products that are going to come from this tutorial. Becky's going to use this for monogramming. Uh, I saw someone say they've got some cross stitch patterns they'd love to try this out with. Uh, Jeanette's going to make Christmas stockings for her family. Oh, I love it. I love it. You know, when I first discovered the iron-on transfer pen is when I first started felting, and I just found it in the craft store. And same, like all those ideas y'all are sharing, previously all we had was the iron-on transfer pen for it. And I love the iron-on transfer pen. I promise I'll keep using it. Because you print out your design, you can print out the lines only. You have to print it in reverse, but then you iron it onto your fabric. So look on our YouTube or our website for that. Just search the word transfer if you haven't seen that. We've shared it a ton of times and we do have a quickie YouTube um, showing how to use it. But this is kind of a fun way to, to print out a design or maybe even some piecings. But I think letters are one of those things that people, you know, have a particularly difficult time with. And I think this is really supportive of especially doing a script or kind of a cursive writing. It doesn't have to be a big, you know, big blocks, big blocks, you can even do the iron-on transfer pen, but I really look forward to seeing what you do with it. So this is the uh, paper Solvi on our website. You can just search um, Solvi and we have the linen fabric in a number of colors that are just perfect for the season right now. So um, look forward to see, you know, what you all do with that and check out the linen, but you can also use this on the wool felt. Just remember that you're going to be getting it wet. That's definitely a consideration. Well, we're going to give away some prizes. Anne's been writing down your names in her magic hat. Um, and tell them what you're giving away today, Anne. All right. Today we are giving away a half yard of the linen fabric and then four half ounce sizes of MC1 colors in your choice. So we selected mm -hmm. colors that work with today's project, but of course you get to pick what color MC1 and what color linen fabric you want. And we're gonna give you the pattern printed out on the Solvi paper too. So you'll get the, you'll get the thankful however you wanna use it, even if you just wanna play with it. So we're gonna give away a couple of prizes right now. Thanks for everyone participating in the chat and contributing your questions. And hey, if we don't draw your name right now, or if your question didn't get answered, please post it down below because we'll do another drawing next week and give away more prizes. Who do you got, Anne? Alrighty, I have got Becky McCall. Becky McCall and Linda Feldman. Thank you all so much for playing with us today. Congratulations, gals. Uh, if you're not in our database, visit our, our website, uh, click the contact us and give us all your complete information. And if you are, thank you. And if you're not, thank you. Thanks everyone for hanging out. We hope that if you work with this project that you'll tag us on Instagram or tag us on Facebook and mostly just thank y'all for being here. We appreciate you. And I'm hoping to have a special guest next week. We're like, hopefully, hopefully. And if I have this special guest, you're really, 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 really going to want to be here. We have it scheduled. We're hoping that everything goes through. So I'm just telling you, next week, 2 o'clock on Wednesday, plan to be here because it's going to be fun. Okay, guys. Yes. Have a great week. Thank you all so much. Be good to yourselves and think good thoughts. Yes. <laughs>